Well, Troy Bayliss starts from the front row of the grid in his home race. He's fifth in the championship. He's fourth on the starting grid. He was second quickest in the warm-up this morning, but as I say, that was in torrentially wet conditions, and that was after crashing twice. So uh, I really didn't expect uh, the conditions here to dry out quite as much as they have done. It's a real surprise. The wind really helping the track to just blow the water off the surface. And it's amazing, really, how quickly it's dried out. Valentino Rossi will be happy with these conditions. He starts from pole position. He's been much faster than the rest of the riders throughout the two days of qualifying, which have both been done in warm and sunny conditions. He stands up and uh, a fitting tribute to Barry Sheen there, the number seven pin badge, which had been sold at the circuit today in, in aid of a local cancer charity. Of course, as I was saying before, Barry Sheen gone but not forgotten certainly in the hearts of the race fans here at Phillip Island and not in the hearts of the riders either that famous number seven currently used by Carlos Checa the Yamaha rider eighth in the championship and ninth on the starting grid he takes to the uh, track for the sighting lap as you can see a very busy and hectic pit lane and I guess Gav a few last minute changes were being made down there. Yeah, I think basically everyone was waiting to see what everyone else had put on their bikes and uh, as they all go out at the moment, they've all gone out with uh, front slick and a rear slick. So that seems to be the decision. It's going to be important for them to pick out the dry land, but just stood here on the grid at the moment and uh, there doesn't seem to be that many wet places on the track at all. Just maybe in a few of the, uh, the valleys, a few of the, the uh, trenches that we get around the track. But uh, nothing too much to worry about. We just hope there are some clouds still around so uh, and a, quite a bit of wind and some that look like they could drop some rain. So let's just hope they stay away for the entire duration of this race. We'll find out very shortly. The riders filing out of pit lane one by one. Here comes the world champion and series leader, Valentino Rossi. He's not going to be touched in that first position this year, that's for sure. 307 points for him. Sete Gibbonneau on 200 and 44 the championship was wrapped up one week ago at Malaysia Rossi says he's feeling now that he's riding without the pressure of the championship around his neck he's out there having fun and he'll be out there going for victory once more you can guarantee that lots of talk still about where he's going to be riding next season one thing that seems to be certain is that he will be riding he won't be driving as you may have read so in some uh, parts of the press reports of an offer from Ferrari to go Formula One racing and uh, seemingly unfounded. Valentino Rossi on pole for the eighth time this season, but it's the first time that he's on pole at Phillip Island. Podium finish would uh, take him to 21 in a row. Only Agostini has beaten that with 22. The top 19 on the grid under uh, Rossi's lap record, the top 17 under the pole record. Loris Capirossi on the front row for the 50th time in the Premier Class. Gibbonau just needs two points to become the highest scoring runner-up in Grand Prix history. Bayliss on the front row from the first time since Jerez. McWilliams in 10th on the grid, the best qualifying for the Proton KR machine. Two places better than Gary McCoy in 12th. That's the best qualifying for the Kawasaki four-stroke. What a performance that was by Jeremy McWilliams, incidentally. His time of 131.367 was over half a second quicker than his pole position lap on the two-stroke Proton last year. So let's take a lap then of the Phillip Island circuit. What a beautiful circuit it is indeed. This very, very fast right-hander, fourth-gear right-hander at the end of the straight, the Doon corner that brings them round into this sweeping left and the southern loop around 127, 130 kilometers an hour as they come out of here, down into the Bass Strait, the sea on the right-hand side blowing a gale across them as they come up the Bass Strait and then into this fifth, fifth gear left-hander around 220, 230 kilometers an hour as they come now into the Honda corner, hard on the brakes, down into first or probably second gear for most of the riders as they come through this 73 kilometer right-hander. Stay in second gear up through Siberia, again some big winds coming off the ocean there as they light the uh, front end loosens up as they go uphill through this sweeping right and then left over Lukey Heights. This is where some of the most spectacular pictures are taken that you see of this Philip Island circuit. 
They drop down the earth, just drops away from them as they go hard onto the brakes into the right hander, the Honda corner. A tight second gear right hander. Uh, sorry, the um, tight 50 mile an hour right hander that brings them back round into the fast fifth, uh, fourth and fifth gear left handers. And then it's back onto the Gardner straight, the start and finish straight. That's a lap of the Phillip Island circuit. Well, that's the view that we've got now of this beautiful Phillip Island circuit, and it couldn't be more different to, than how it was when we woke up this morning. We've had rain, heavy torrential rain this morning, dark clouds, and now look at that. You can see the, st the sea is still a bit choppy, but down there on the grid, Gav, things look to have brightened up. Definitely uh, much, uh, much sunnier than it was for 125 and 250s. There are some dark clouds still about, and... Uh, well, some of these teams, they did come out onto the grid, such as Toru Akawa, Marco Melandri on the Yamaha. They both came out with cut, slick front tyres, and uh, they've changed those now for slick front tyres. And there are a few spots of rain in the air at the moment. Valentino Rossi wearing that Barishin number seven pin badge, starting from pole position for the eighth time this season. And he's never been off the podium all year. What a run for Valentino Rossi, the world champion, deservedly so. Could be riding for Yamaha, could be riding for Ducati next season. Will he be on this bike? It's going to be ridden today by Loris Capirossi on the front row for the 50th time in the Premier Class. Second on the grid for Capirossi and looking to improve on a bad run of results in recent weeks. Sete Gibbonau, the championship is over for him, but the fight is still on for second place. Titanium Pedrosa. Get well soon, we are with you. That's from Sete Gibbonau. The message, of course, to Danny Pedrosa, the 125cc world champion who underwent a few operations in um, Melbourne after breaking both his ankles in the first free practice on Friday morning. And Pedrosa, I'm sure, will be watching this race from his hospital bed. Here's Troy Bayliss on the outside of the front row. What a big race for him. Certainly is, and he's had his ups and downs. Two crashes in the morning warm-up, a crash in qualifying yesterday. He's won two World Superbike races here. He's ridden here many, many times on his way up through the Australian Championships. He made his Grand Prix debut here on a 250cc Suzuki. The crowd are absolutely behind him. I've got to say he's very relaxed uh, about it all, and it's a big, big race for Troy Bayliss. And, uh, well, we wait and see. What a performance by this man. He just gets better and better every time we see him race. 22 years old, Nicky Hayden, the AMA Superbike champion. I think many people regard this man as a future world champion. He's qualified fifth fastest on the second row of the grid. Uh, repeat of his uh, qualifying position at Mategi two weeks ago. And alongside him, he's got some pretty big characters. Max Biaggi, of course, he won the Pacific race uh, two weeks ago in Japan currently lying third in the championship he's also won here at Phillip Island on the 500cc a Yamaha looks up at the sky as everybody else has done Max Biaggi has qualified sixth fastest on the second row of the grid good I'm performance just breaking there Nick sorry I'm just down here uh, on the grid with uh, Jeremy Burgess Jeremy uh, some difficult conditions down here uh, you're not being kind to us you Australians <laughs> uh, it seems to be dry now um, Valentino said it's pretty much dry all the way around it uh, doesn't look like there's much up above us and uh, hopefully we'll get uh, an hour where we don't have any problems. Yeah, that's what we hope. Uh, there's a dry racing line formed at the end of the 250s, but did Valentino say if anything offline, if there were maybe some damp patches around there? Oh, I'm sure there are damp patches around, but uh, uh, he's comfortable with the slicks and I see Laris Caparossi went from a cut slick to a slick, so I think everything's all right. OK, thanks very much, Jerry, and uh, all the best for your home race. Thank you very much. Jeremy Burgess, of course, the crew chief to Valentino Rossi, the world champion. We're looking at Turo Akawa, who's qualified eighth fastest on the second row of the grid. Teammate to Max Piaggi, really fighting for his MotoGP future. Turo Akawa, needs some big results. Alongside him, we just got a glimpse uh, a moment ago, Marco Melandri, the 250cc world champion. In fact, clinched the championship here a year ago. He's qualified seventh, and uh, he needs some good results also. We come on to the third row of the grid. The Spaniard, Carlos Checa riding the Yamaha. He's qualified ninth fastest, a 131.302 for Carlos Checker. 
His MotoGP future, I won't say, is in the balance, but where will he be riding next season? Two good results here, and in Valencia in two weeks' time, may it be a big, big help. And we look at the tyre changes once again. This is the Proton KR machine of Jeremy McWilliams. Brilliantly qualified in 10th place on the four-stroke. For the first time ever, he's qualified faster on the four-stroke than he had done on the 500cc two-stroke. One would imagine they're changing that front tyre, that Bridgestone front tyre, to a slick tyre rather than a hand-cut slick. Nick, uh, just about the weather that we've got at the moment, it is pretty nice at the moment, but there are some uh, looming dark clouds and the wind is moving this way. Uh, they're behind you in the commentary box. That means they are actually coming towards the track. I, I hate to be the bringer of bad news, but there are, you know, there have been a few spots in the air on this grid at the moment. And, uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to have a good look at the Proton in a second. I'm just alongside Gary McCoy, hoping we can get a word with him in a second. But... Uh, yeah, just to see if the Proton, whether they may be taking a gamble here, they may be risking going with a cut front slick. It may be a sort of risk worth taking for them, I don't know. I think you're right, Gavin. Uh, I think somebody may take a risk. The Kawasaki's, the Protons, the WCMs, people who aren't going to perhaps get up the field very easily if the race stays dry, they may just take a risk and hope the rain will come. Of course, it can misfire very badly indeed. Welcome back, John Hopkins, the fourth row of the grid. Uh, he's qualified 13th fastest, of course. John was... Uh, well, banned, I suppose is the word to say, from the Malaysian Grand Prix after that first lap crash in uh, Montegi two weeks ago. Race direction decided that it was an accident that it could have been avoided. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy since then about the accident. I'll but just break in again, yes, Nick. Certainly. Uh, I'm just down here on the grid with uh, Gary McCoy. Gaz, uh, the best qualifying result for the Kawasaki, you looked a lot more comfortable. Is it, is it the home race? Is the bike improving? Is it, is it the track that you know like the back of your hand? Uh, you know, for sure, a little bit. It's the home race, um, but as well, it's it's a track that the bike seems to, you know, uh, doesn't seem to be going too bad around. Like in uh, Brazil, we had the same thing. You know, we're just turning up to new tracks, and uh, you know, we're just finding out how they how they work at each track as we get to them. And with the conditions here today, it looks to be drying. There seems to be a few clouds, a lot of wind. Will that be uh, affecting you during the race? Do you think? Yeah, for sure. Just on that uh, sight and lap, it, it's a little bit windy around the back and it's kind of pushing the bikes a little bit offline, so it's going to be pretty tough. OK, well, all the best for your home race here, guys. No worries. Thank you. Well, I don't know what it's like down there, Gav, but it's still cold up here in the commentary box. It's a chilly, chilly day here at Phillip Island. And as you can see, Alex Barros has got his woolly gloves on. The sun may be out with that... Uh, grid girl there she's going blue almost isn't she i don't know if i'm doing her a disservice it might be the reflection off the umbrella but uh, it's certainly very cold barros removes his woolly gloves he's about to put his racing gloves on as we get underway here at philip island it's round 15 of the championship ricardo tomada he's really really impressed us in the last two races perhaps didn't impress race direction two weeks ago at Montegi when he was excluded from the results after finishing third. But uh, he's not done so well here in the dry conditions with the Bridgestone tyres. But, uh, well, I suppose people get fed up with us talking about tyres and the weather. But it is absolutely crucial what the weather is going to do here. What the weather does here in the next 45 minutes will decide the outcome of this race. And uh, I'm really interested to know, Gavin, if anybody's taking some big gambles. I can't see. Obviously, they've all got tyre warmers on at the moment. I can't really tell you if anyone is taking gambles. Most people are going with a dry setup. That's obviously with the, with the carbon brakes and things like that. Aprilia on, on their brakes, they have a sort of shield uh, on, the, on the actual uh, brake discs themselves to keep, sort of keep them warm because in these cold conditions, carbon brakes really don't like it at all. They like to be hot. And obviously, uh, if, if there are conditions like this, if, it, if the temperatures do drop, then they're not going to be as hot as, as they used to be. But it seems everyone's gone with a dry setup. Front tyres slick, rear tyres slick. So uh, at the moment, it's like that. I think they're just going to say, if it does rain, the race is going to be stopped and restarted. So we might as well go with the dry setup for the time being. Yeah, that is certainly uh, the case, isn't it? If it's a, a dry, if it's declared a dry race, everybody who's out there on slicks is going to be uh, in a decent position. Then, when if it starts to rain, they're just going to call them in and put, uh, you know, give them a chance to change onto wet tyres anyway. So, I can't really see the advantage in taking any sort of gamble here. Valentino Rossi certainly not. He's on pole position. He's going to ride with slicks from the start. Nobu Atsuaoki had a big crash on Friday. He was taken to hospital. He missed a Friday afternoon qualifying session with a, well, it was just turned out to be a stiff neck, but uh, he was taken up to Melbourne for x-rays. But he's back. He's fit. He's on the grid in 20th place. 
Crashed that in the morning warm-up, as did so many other people. Andrew Pitt, the former World Supersport champion, in front of his home crowd, riding the Kawasaki, sixth row of the grid. He's qualified in 21st place. Real shame that for Andrew Pitt. He was 12th fastest on the first day, but he couldn't get a lap in yesterday. And uh, Ryuichi Kionari on the sixth row in 22nd. Talk of him going to the British Superbike Championship next season. And uh, perhaps even Colin Edwards taking his place alongside Sete Gibbonau. We will see David De Gea on the WCM, the Spanish rider, also on the sixth row in 23rd place. Yeah, he's ridden pretty well on that WCM in very, very difficult circumstances. Now, I think there's a man that everybody feels sorry for. He's yet to finish a MotoGP race. He's got two to go this season. The 23-year-old Geordie Chris Burns is qualified 24th. All he wants to do is say he's finished a MotoGP race. And if you finish a MotoGP race here at Phillip Island, you've certainly got something to be proud about. 27 laps of this 4.448 kilometre, 2.764 miles Phillip Island circuit. It's the rider's favourite. The weather is clearing up. The penultimate round of the MotoGP World Championships. The front row, Troy Bayliss, Sete Gibbonau, Loris Capirossi, and on pole position, it's the doctor, it's Valentino Rossi. Well, it's going to be interesting on this sighting lap, just have a look at the conditions. It obviously is drying out a great deal. They were 27 laps, front row confirmed. Rossi, Capirossi, Gibbonau, Bayliss, Honda versus Ducati. Rossi getting away really quickly there for that warm-up lap. Second row, Nicky Hayden, Max Biaggi, Marco Melandri, and Toru Ukawa. Third row, Carlos Checker, Jeremy McWilliams, Shinya Nakano, and Gary McCoy. The fourth row, John Hopkins, Kenny Roberts, Olivier Jacques, and Alex Barros. Jacques winning the 250cc championship here, what, three years ago. Fifth row, Tamada, Edwards, Haga, and Aoki. And the sixth and final row, Pitt, Kianari, De Gea, and Chris Burns. I was just saying how quickly uh, Rossi got away from the line there. You can see he's absolutely miles ahead of the rest on this warm-up lap. He's really going quickly. I'm not sure if he's just wanting to test out and push on this warm-up lap and see what these conditions are like. It really is the key for the riders to know how hard they can push it on the opening laps of the race. I would think that's exactly what he's doing, wouldn't you? Going a little bit harder than you would expect. Uh, just to push it to the limit, just to see exactly where that racing line is and how dry the track is. The blue, blue sea, magnificent view there of the Bass Strait. You'd have been here half an hour ago, you wouldn't have seen any of that. The rain was sleeting down here, absolutely sideways, misty and cold. Conditions are better. It's going to be dry. It's going to be, I won't say perfect conditions for the penultimate round of the championship, but it's going to be very, very good race. Can Bayliss prevent Rossi winning? Just some very interesting things down here in pit lane. Obviously, all the bikes have their, all the teams have their spare bikes down here, and just some bikes have wet front tyres, some bikes have wet front setups, but they have a dry tyre in there. They've got steel brakes in on some bikes. A whole, uh, a whole range of different bikes down here, just in case there's a problem with these bikes as they come round now, and just in case the rain starts to fall. Well, things could get very, very complicated here at Phillip Island today, but there's nothing complicated about the start. It's a dry start. It's a full complement on the grid. And once again, Valentino Rossi, for the eighth time this season, will start from pole position. Rossi chasing his eighth Grand Prix win of the season. He's won here at Phillip Island in 500cc, MotoGP, one, two, uh, and two 250cc wins. It's going to be 27 laps of the riders' favourite circuit here at Phillip Island in Australia. It's the penultimate round of the MotoGP World Championship. The green flag is shown, the red flag is taken away, the lights will go to red, and racing will be underway here at Phillip Island. The Australian Grand Prix starts. Excellent start from the two Ducatis, Troy Bayliss and Loris Capirossi, sandwiching Sete Gibbonau there in the front row. And one of the Hondas has come through as well. Is it Max Biaggi who leads into the first corner? Max Biaggi from the second row in sixth place. And he runs it wide at the start. And it's Loris Capirossi. Or is it Troy Bayliss who leads the way? I think it's Capirossi that leads the way. Sete Gibbonau in second place. Biaggi got a great start from the second row of the grid, then ran it a little bit wide. Rossi is also in there. 
down towards the hairpin they come. Yeah, it's Bayliss who's leading the way, Nick. Bayliss first. Melandry has got an absolutely fantastic start as well. Also from the second row, he's in fourth place now. So it's Bayliss from uh, from Gibbonau. Melandry now up to third from Capirossi, then Piaggi, then Hayden, and Valentino Rossi behind his teammate. Bayliss leads the way. Bayliss in front of his home crowd. Sete Gibbonau in second place. The pack stream through, up through Siberia. Dry line certainly appearing. Dry line certainly there. Troy Bayliss, he crashed twice in the morning warm-up. He crashed in qualifying. He won two World Superbike races here last year. And he leads the way in front of the Australian crowd as they race down towards Lukey Heights. Into this right-hand hairpin for the first time. This is where uh, Troy Bayliss crashed out this morning in the warm-up. Valentino Rossi already looking to make progress. He's got past Max Biaggi there, so is Nicky Hayden. But uh, Bayliss now coming around the fast left, fourth gear left-hander that comes round into the start-finish straight. The Australian on the Ducati runs it wide into the entry, into the start-finish straight, and Gibbonau has come through. So Sete Gibbonau will lead the way as they cross the line for the first time. It's Gibbonau, Bayliss, Melandri and Capirossi. 200 miles an hour, they break for the right-hander, doing corner third gear. Sete Gibbonau leads, Bayliss still in second place. Great ride by Melandri in third place. He clinched the 250cc title here last year. And here comes Valentino Rossi. Rossi's got past Hayden into fifth place. So Rossi wasting no time to make his move through the field after making a fairly disappointing start from pole position. But it's the Honda of Gibbonau, then the Ducati of Bayliss, and then the Yamaha of the 250cc former world champion, uh, Marco Malandri, our current world champion, Marco Malandri. That title still to be decided, of course, in the 250 class. Here comes Malandri. He won the title at this track one year ago, and he's absolutely flying now. He's got past Pre uh, Bayliss. He's up to second place. Nicky Hayden still in front of Valentino Rossi. So at the front, Malandri now challenging Sete Gibbano. Malandri takes the lead. The Yamaha leads the Honda. They almost touch as they go through the top of Siberia. Malandri leads. Bayliss trying to go up the inside there of Gibbano. Doesn't do so. They're now going to plunge down Lucky Heights any moment now. They plunge now. Melandri leads the way. Gibbonau second. Bayliss third. Kappa Rossi, Hayden Rossi. And then it looks like Max Piaggi and Turo Akawa. Yeah, uh, Nicky Hayden's got pa uh, passed back. Uh, back past uh, Valentino Rossi. I'll get my words the right way around eventually. But yeah, Hayden absolutely flying now. He's got back past Rossi. A real scrap now going on. Biaggi and Akawa just losing touch a little bit with this lead group. They cross the line. 25 laps to go of this Australian Grand Prix. The penultimate round of the championship. Here comes Bayliss up the inside of Gibbonau. They're absolutely side by side. Bayliss back into second place. 150 miles an hour round the right-hander. Melandri leads. Bayliss second. Gibbonau third. Caparossi four. And Rossi now up into fifth place in front of Nicky Hayden. Yeah, Nicky Hayden was the fastest man of the circuit on that pass lap as he got past Rossi and up to fifth place, but he wasn't able to hang on to it as they came down the straight for the second time. Rossi out of the slipstream into the fast right, uh, fast right at the end of the straight and Rossi now back up to fifth position. Bayliss on the break, trying to go up the inside of Markham Landry, doesn't do so. Melandry leads, Bayliss second. Sete Gibbonau, big crash during Friday morning practice, 180 miles an hour. Loris Caparossi, Hayden fights back. You don't do this against the world champion. You don't do this against your teammate. The American AAMA champion does just that. We ride with Rossi. It's his teammate, Nicky Hayden, in front of him. What a ride this really is from Nicky Hayden. Up into fifth place and really making great strides. He could have taken pole position, you know, in the final qualifying yesterday. He was on a pole lap. He could have snatched it from Valentino Rossi, but he got he held up by Sete Gibbana. He's not getting held up by Loris Capirossi, that's for sure. Hayden goes through on Capirossi and he's up to fourth place. Valentino Rossi wanted to come through as well. There just wasn't room for him to go past Capirossi. We ride with the world champion, Valentino Rossi. Loris Capirossi in front of him. Third gear, fourth gear around this very, very fast left-hander. Brings them back into the start and finish straight. 200 miles an hour down here. Rossi now lining up Caparossi, but Caparossi's Ducati just too fast for the Hondas. They break for the right-hander. Here comes Rossi once again, but Melandri leads away from Bayliss. Gibbonau, Nicky Hayden, as Rossi got through, he has. Rossi has got past Loris Caparossi. We always get good racing at Phillip Island. This is fantastic. And the fastest lap of the race to Max Biaggi. Max Biaggi in seventh and closing in on that lead group. There you can see him on the number three Honda. Well, it was an important point for Max Biaggi to set that time and keep in touch with the lead group. But, and there goes Bayliss. He's almost touched with Melandri. Bayliss over the top of his Ducati and down 
And well, Bayliss, it looks as though he's out cold there because he hasn't moved. And that could be very serious. Now, let's have a look. Let's just... Uh, at the front, Gibbonow has gone through. Nicky Hayden's gone through as well. Marco Melandri was pushed wide when we saw. Now, let's have a look what happens. Nicky Hayden's going to take the lead. Nicky Hayden in front of Sete Gibbonow. Hayden leads from Gibbonow. Melandri now up on the inside of Gibbonow as well, but uh, uh, Gibbonow hangs on to second place. So it's Hayden, Gibbonow, Melandri, then Rossi and Kathy Rossi, and Biaggi closing in. But, uh, well, let's just keep our fingers crossed for Troy Bayliss. Nicky Hayden leads the way from Sete Gibbonow. Melandri, Rossi. Loris Caparossi, any news we have on Troy Bayliss, obviously we will bring it to you as soon as we can. They're round the left-hander, the fast left-hander that brings her back into the start and finish straight. Nicky Hayden wanted to finish on the podium fair and square, he said, after being awarded third place at Mategi. We look again at the crowd. Bayliss on the brakes on the outside. I don't think he quite touches the rear end there of Marco Melandri's Honda, but he falls very, very awkwardly indeed. We wait for any news. We have a new race leader. It's Marco Melandri that leads the way. Nicky Hayden in second place. Valentino Rossi is right in there in third. Loris Caparossi has gone past Sete Gibbonow. What a race at the front. Nicky Hayden up the inside now of Marco Melandri. Hayden back in front. Melandri back into second place. And we wait for any news on Troy Bayliss. Here comes Valentino Rossi trying to go up the inside of Marco Melandri. Doesn't do so. Fastest man on the circuit at the moment, Olivier Jacques. And he's brought a few men with him as well. Look, there goes Toro Rukawa. In fact, Rukawa up on the inside of Jacques. So, uh, one man we've lost from that group, by the way, Max Biaggi has disappeared. I'm not sure what's happened to Biaggi, but uh, this group has really bunched up at the front. Max Biaggi has just actually gone down the straight. Not sure at all what's happened to him, but he's just gone down the straight now. So, Max Biaggi out of this fight at the lead group. The le uh, race leader, though, Nicky Hayden from his teammate Valentino Rossi. Hayden leads Rossi second, Melandri third. The fastest man on the uh, circuit, as I was saying, Olivier Jacques in seventh place a real group at the front here comes Rossi he's had enough of this battling now around with these rookies with Hayden and Melandri Rossi in control Rossi leads the way as they come into the fast left third gear fourth gear down the straight 200 miles an hour Valentino Rossi chasing his eighth Grand Prix victory of the season leads the way Max Biaggi has had problems Troy Bayliss has crashed out of the race what a start to the ultimate round of the championship but it's now got a familiar feel to it down the straight they go. The Gardner straight, named after Wayne Gardner. Melandri up the inside of Nicky Hayden. This is an extraordinary ride by Marco Melandri. Easily the best rider we've seen from the 250cc world champion on a MotoGP bike. Nicky Hayden still in third place. Loris Caparossi fourth. And Troy Bayliss now being taken off on the stretcher. Yeah, there's a wave there from Troy Bayliss. His neck's in a brace, but he's conscious. And a wave to the Australian crowd. Thank goodness for that. Troy Bayliss is okay, and now we can enjoy this MotoGP race. What a thrilling ride it is at the front. The two rookies, Hayden and Melandri, they've come of age in this, uh, what, the 15th and penultimate round of the 2003 season. But it looks as though Rossi's going to start stretching them out now at the front. A car was six, Jacques seven, Checker eight, Nakano nine, Barros ten, Roberts 11, McCoy 12, McWilliams in 13th place, Hopkins 14, Pitt 15th, 16th, Colin Edwards. Nicky Hayden just having a bite at, Mal at Marco Melandri once more there in third position. Melandri doing so, so well in second place. He, he was the highest qualified Yamaha on the grid in seventh place on the second row. And he's uh, by far the highest Yamaha in the race. His teammate Carlos Checker there in the background. But Melandri, without a doubt, having the ride of his life in the MotoGP class. As I say, he won the title here one year ago in the 250cc class. He obviously likes it. He's got good memories for him. And, well, fingers crossed there will be more good memories of this circuit for Marco Melandri. We saw him ride superbly well, remember, at Donington when he was up there in the front group for those opening laps. Then he crashed out at the chicane from fourth place. Let's hope Marco Melandri can hang in there and keep fighting with these guys at the front. Valentino Rossi now opening up a bit of advantage. Hayden up into second place. Up the inside there of Marco Melandri. So Hayden now second, Melandri third, Caparossi four, Chippen out in fifth place. Torokawa going very well in sixth place. The gap now just over one second. Hayden takes up the chase against his teammate, the world champion Valentino Rossi. They break for the hairpin. 20 and a half laps to go. Melandri back up the inside of Nicky Hayden. They're chopping and changing. It's more like a 125cc race. And Melandri just hangs on there. No, he doesn't. Hayden is back in second place. Melandri third. Chibonau four. Caparossi five. Torokawa in sixth place.
Nicky Hayden absolutely desperate to finish on the podium here. Of course, he did take a podium finish two races ago at Mategi when uh, Makoto Tomada was disqualified, but that wasn't until an hour after the race, and Hayden never got the chance to stand on the rostrum itself. He could get that chance here in Australia this weekend. The sun is shining here at Phillip Island. The track is warming up. The racing is warming up. And, well, the championship's already in the pocket of the race leader, Valentino Rossi, but there's plenty to play for still here. There's th there is some kind of rain falling. It's hardly rain, I, I can say, but in the wind, there are water drops falling in the air as Valentino Rossi comes down the main straight. There aren't clouds overhead, but there's definitely some kind of rain falling on the circuit. Marco Malandri back up the inside of Nicky Hayden. Here comes Sete Gimeno also. Malandri back into second. Hayden third. Gimeno looking threatening in fourth place. Tighter line. And Turo Akal having a very good ride just in front of Loris Caparotti. Melandri and Hayden, you'd say the future of MotoGP rests in their hands. They look very, very capable hands at the moment. Toro Okawa, as you rightly say, Nick, riding very, very well there and beginning to threaten Sete Dibana. Okawa finished on the podium here last year. He hasn't finished on the podium since then, so he likes this track. Nicky Hayden, though, up on the inside of Melandri once again. Hayden back up to second. It's all fun and games between the two rookies, and they look like they're enjoying it. The gap now between Valentino Rossi and who's ever in second place at the moment, it is Nicky Hayden, is 1.3 seconds. So Rossi just opening up the advantage, but what a race we've got for second place. Hayden, Melandri, Gibinau, Tura Carvo has got in front of Loris Caparossi, Carlos Checa, Olivier Jack 8, Nakano 9, Barros 10, Kenny Roberts in 11th place, McWilliams currently in 14th place, and Colin Edwards the former World Superbike Championship down in 17th place. There's a, there's a bit of talk going on in the pit lane that maybe Valentino Rossi, when he went past Marco Melandri, was under a yellow flag because that's where Troy Bayliss was. So that's the talk going round down at the moment in the pit lane that Valentino Rossi, we've already seen at Donington, he passed under the yellow flag there with Loris Capi Rossi and had 10 seconds knocked off his time. Again, there's a worry in the pit lane and that might happen again. Well, absolutely on the ball, Gavin, in pit lane. We wait for developments there and obviously, Gavin, anything we find out about Troy Bayliss, but we did see away from Troy Bayliss as he was taken away on the stretcher because he fell very nastily indeed. Marco Melandri up to second at the end of the straight, but Nicky Hayden takes it back as they come through the southern loop, runs it a little bit wide, and then Melandri's back up on the inside. They almost touch as they come up the Bass straight. The sea breeze blows in from the right-hand side. Sete Gibinau, a close spectator there in fourth place. They head up the hill towards the Honda corner, hard on the brakes, into the right hand, the second gear. And uh, Nicky Hayden runs it wide, Hayden runs it wide, and Gibbonau, Ukawa and Capirossi all go through. Well, Nicky Hayden, he's got it all to do again. A mistake by the American, just run it a little bit wide. Here are we watch, he's on the brakes. Ah, yes, it's just nowhere for him to go. He's just got to put it straight for a moment, uh, momentarily straight. And uh, in MotoGP, if you do that, the pack just streams through. But don't give up on Hayden. He'll be back fighting for that to second or third place. But Landry now second, Gibbonau third, Akawa four, Caparossi five, sixth place, Nicky Hayden. And in seventh place, uh, uh, Carlos Checa and Olivier Jacques, both on the Yamaha. Shinya Nakano, 10, and Kenny Rob Alex Barros, 10, sorry, and Kenny Roberts in 11th place. Big wobble there for Marco Melandri. You can tell how hard he's pushing that Yamaha to stay with these Hondas. A really superb ride from the youngster in his first season in the MotoGP class. Riding a four-stroke, never ridden a four-stroke before, never ridden anything so big as this 990cc Yamaha. But he's really doing ever so well there in second place. Season started in disaster for him. Loris Caparossi gets up the inside of Turo Okawa. Of course, Marco Melandri broke his leg in two places at the opening Grand Prix of the season. In practice, the opening Grand Prix of the season at Suzuka in Japan. He's taken a long time to recover. He's flying in second place. Sete Gibbonau third. Loris Caparossi now in fourth place. Turakawa fifth. Rossi at the hairpin. Caparossi now just starting to push the Ducati beyond the limit. Let's see what the Ducatis can do against the Honda and the Yamaha. Behind Nicky Hayden, Carlos Checa right behind him. Carlos Checa in seventh place. So really, Ross is running away at the front. 2.4 second advantage. Then the battle is between Melandri, Gibbonau, Akawa, Caparossi, Hayden and Checa. New circuit record for Valentino Rossi. That lap of 132.161.
even in these cruel conditions here at the Phillip Island circuit, the uh, pace this year has been so much quicker. Rossi's pole time was uh, around two seconds quicker than the previous pole record here set, of course, by Jeremy McWilliams last year on the two-stroke Proton. But Rossi was riding the uh, four-stroke Honda here last year, and uh, like I tell you, he went two seconds quicker this time around. A lot of that to do with the fact that Michelin brought uh, sticky qualifiers here this year, which they didn't do last year. But even so, the... Uh, class and the pace of this MotoGP class has moved up a step. Melandri crosses the line still in second place. Hanging on now from Sete Gibbonau who looks at the inside at the end of the straight in third place. Then it's Capi Rossi still and Okawa and Nicky Hayden just dropping off slightly. Here comes Capi Rossi up on the inside of Gibbonau. Capi Rossi up to third place. Three Italians now in the top three. Rossi out on his own at the front. Then it's Melandri holding off Capi Rossi and Gibbon the Spaniard in fourth. Behind him we have Toro Akawa, Nicky Hayden and Carlos Checker. Alex Barros into the pits as well. It looks like he's going to retire from this one. Gavin, any more news on that yellow flag controversy? I don't think uh, that it's happened. There's nothing uh, going on down here at the moment. I'm sure they're probably looking at the tapes, but uh, I'm sure we'd have seen something. There was so much controversy after it happened last time. I'm sure they'd be right on the ball this time. But uh, no, not heard anything. I've asked about Troy Bennett's condition either. No news so far. Well, there is Max Biaggi, and we're still not quite sure what happened to him. He disappeared from this uh, group at the front, and he's way down the field now in 22nd place. Here comes Valentino Rossi down into the hairpin over Lukey Heights. And then this fairing bashing second group. It's a shame that Rossi's not still involved in it, but uh, he has been a cut apart during qualifying. We did expect him to split at the front of this pack, and it's what he's done. He enjoyed those first few laps, I'm sure, but uh, perhaps thought, I'm getting out of the way of these guys, because the way that Hayden and Melandri were going at it was quite something. And I think now, Things have just settled down for now, but I'm sure they're about to pick up as they come down the end of the straight. Capi Rossi on the Ducati gets in front of uh, the Yamaha of Marco Melandri. Capi Rossi now up to second, but runs it wide, and can Melandri take second back? It looks as though he will. He gets his left knee out around the outside of Capi Rossi, and he does so. So uh, Capi Rossi and that Ducati had the extra speed down the straight, but just couldn't quite hang on on the brakes. Now, we've seen that many times this season with the Ducati. Very, very fast and deep. Time penalty for Valentino Rossi. Absolutely on the ball there for Gavin down in pit lane. Rossi has obviously overtaken Marco Melandri when the yellow flags were being shown for the crash of Troy Bayliss. Rossi has a time penalty. This race is far from over. Valentino Rossi's going to have to come in for 10 seconds and then rejoin the race. And it's debatable whether he'll be able to work his way back through this pack because they are running at an extremely fast pace behind him. Here comes Loris Capi Rossi at the inside of Marco Melandri once again. Capi Rossi now up to second. And that's virtually the race lead for Capi Rossi because, as we know, Rossi is going to have to come in. Now they come down into the hairpin. Marco Melandri once again on the brakes. Marco Melandri back in front of Loris Capi Rossi. They head up into the long double left hander that brings them back into the start finish track and any second now Rossi surely will be told by his pit board that he has to come in this is the battle for the lead it may be look like a battle for second place but Valentino Rossi has been penalized. he looks at his pit board now does he realize what is happening we're pretty certain because he overtook Marco Melandri when the yellow flags are being raised when a Troy Bayless crashed Capo Rossi back into second place Marco Melandri third set a Gibbonau in fourth place but this is going to be the battle for the lead because the race leader, Valentino Rossi, has a 10-second penalty for overtaking under a yellow flag. A 10-second penalty for Valentino Rossi. That doesn't mean he's got to go into the pit. Just means 10 seconds, I would imagine, is going to be taken off his time. Over to you, Gavin. Yeah, but they haven't called, they haven't put a flag out for him to come into the pit, so it's just a case of, I assume, the 10 seconds coming off his time, which is what happened at Donington, effectively, but he didn't know about it during the race. Many people argued that if he'd have known about it during the race, he'd have known to open up over a 10-second gap and he'd have pushed it that little bit extra. Well, he knows about it this time, so uh, there can be no arguments at the end of this race. Well, it will be interesting to see now what the pit boards say down there. Marco Melandri up on the inside of Loris Capirossi, and Capirossi hits back. Well, the gap be, uh, between Rossi and the second group stands at 3.56 seconds, as you can see there. And uh, so Rossi is going to have to open up another six and a half seconds over the last 14 laps if he's going to uh, win this race. Malandri back in front of Loris Capi Rossi. What a ride this really is from the young Italian. It's heart in mouth here. The uh, 
patient Australian crowd who've come down here this morning despite the pouring weather for the 125 and 250 races. It was Brawley's out, it was Southwesters out. Some people will have opted to stay in bed and they'll be sorry if they're watching this on TV now because the gap between Rossi and the rest of the gap uh, and the rest of the pack is extending. But Nick, it doesn't look as though it's extending enough. It certainly does. It's 3.7 seconds. He's got a 10 second penalty, don't forget, as they go round the left hander. Caparossi second, Sete Gibinau third, Marco Melandri fourth. But as it stands at the moment, we don't want to confuse this too much. Loris Caparossi would be leading the race. Sete Gibinau would certainly be in second place. Marco Melandri would be third. And perhaps Valentino Rossi would be fourth or fifth. Now, can Valentino Rossi work this out in his head? as he's going round the track. He's been docked 10 seconds because he overtook when the yellow flags were being waved. He overtook Marco Melandri when Troy Bayliss went down at the hairpin. They're letting him know on his next time round. The, the, pit, the pit crew didn't exactly know how many seconds he was going to be penalised, but they're now going to put on his pit ball when he goes past that he's got minus 10 on the top of it. So that lets him know that how many seconds he has been penalised. And he'll know going through and he'll just have to do the maths himself as he goes round. Marco Melandri there getting past Sete Gibinau, but I think as they came over the top of Lukey Heights, Gibinau got him back on the brakes. Gibinau, slight shake of the head. He can hardly believe what Melandri is doing on the brakes into that right hand hairpin. It's something else to watch. Melandri riding out of his skin on the Yamaha. Now then, uh, actually looking down the timesheets, that uh, 10 second penalty for Valentino Rossi would put him in seventh place behind Carlos Checa. And uh, here we're going to see it again. The yellow flags now, we can't see them on the picture. This is where he overtakes Marco Melandri, though. Look out for the yellow flags anywhere in the distance. There it is. The marshal clearly on the corner. And, uh, yep, no complaints. There is that minus 10 that Galb was just telling us about on the pit board for Valentino Rossi. And as I say, he's now extended his lead over the chasing pack to 3.9 seconds. He's going to have to turn up the heat here and stretch it out by another six seconds to win this race. If anybody can do it, he can. The biggest challenge of the doctor so far this season. Capo Rossi, second on the roads, but leading the race. Marco Melandri, third on the roads, but second in the race. Sete Gibinau in third place, but fourth on the roads. Nicky Hayden is coming back at him, and Nicky Hayden has got back in front now of Sete Gibinau. We have to be very, very careful how we commentate this. Let's just get it absolutely clear. Valentino Rossi, who leads the race on the roads, has been docked 10 seconds because he overtook when a yellow flag was being waved. His advantage at the moment is 3.9 seconds over Loris Caparossi. Of course, that's not enough to win the race. They're now putting out on Rossi's pit ball position eight. They're letting him know where he is uh, after the calculations have been done. On Loris Caparossi's board, however, they're putting position two, so they're not letting him know. Oh, there's a man going down there. That's uh, Melandri. Marco Melandri, he was riding absolutely out of his skin in third place. He's gone down. What a brave ride from the youngster, but it's all ended in tears. It's in the gravel. And now then it's a clear second position, or first position, in fact, for Loris Capirossi. A gap to uh, Gibbonau and Hayden. Gibbonau up on the inside of Hayden at the end of this straight. Gibbonau now up to second position, remember. Gibbonau now second. Loris Capirossi leading. Rossi out in front on the track, but down in eighth on the overall timing screens. And it looks as though uh, Melandri could have hurt his arm there. Let's have a look at this. Down he goes on the Yamaha. Fast part of the circuit, the far part of the circuit, into the gravel, and it does look like he's damaged his wrist or his hand. We look at again, nasty high side. Not too high in the air, but it's a very fast part of the circuit. And poor old Marco Melandri. He spent too much time in the hospitals. He spent too much time in those clinics. I'd be really, really interested, Gavin. I know it's hard for you just to know what the other teams are telling uh, their riders. Uh, you told us that Loris Caparossi wasn't being told that he's leading the race. But what about Sete Givino? What about Toro Akawa? What about Nicky Hayden? It's a very, very complicated situation. Uh, Sete Givino is being told that he's second in the race at the moment. So he, he knows that at the moment. Valentino Rossi is about to be told that he's in uh, third place, it looks like, on his pit board. They're right next to each other. All right, they're putting him up as being uh, 3.4 seconds uh, behind, but still, they're, they're all trying to do the maths themselves down here on pit lane. It's obviously a very confusing situation. Nicky Hayden's being told he's in fourth. Same for Toru Wakawa, so no one really knows what's going on. What is clear, though, is that Rossi knows that he does have 10 seconds off his time.
Well, uh, it seems as though Loris Capirossi knows it as well. Now, look at Rossi. He's gone across oh. with the fastest lap of the race so far, a 131.8. Capirossi responds with a 132.4. So Rossi takes off six tenths there on that lap to extend his gap to 4.6 seconds with 11 laps to go. Loris Capirossi has just put some daylight between himself and this chasing pack of Gibbonau, Hayden, Ukawa and Checker. Well, that's exactly what he's got to do, isn't he? He doesn't want to get involved in this scrap because obviously it's slowing the pace a little bit. He has a real, real chance here, Loris Caparotti, in strange circumstances of winning this race. Let's tell you, there's ten and a half laps to go. We've forgotten about the laps. Let's tell you, Valentino Rossi leads the way, but he's been docked ten seconds for overtaking under a yellow flag. His advantage over Caparotti at the moment, 4.9, sorry, 4.6 seconds. So Caparotti leads by over five seconds on corrected time. Caparossi, we think, knows the situation. Certainly, Valentino Rossi knows the situation. I think these just behind him are going to slog it out as hard as they can. It's Gibbonau leads Hayden. Toro Akawa just behind them. And Carlos Checker having a good ride on the Yamaha. Tucked in behind them. His teammate is Nicky Hayden. Goes Nicky. up the inside of Sete Gibbonau at the bottom of Lucky Heights. So, Nicky Hayden up into third place on the road. But could be, or is, second place as the results go. But Rossi, with these sort of laps, is obviously going to change this situation. Yeah, but he's still in sixth place overall, Nick. We're just looking at the lap times as they come across. Valentino Rossi, 131.7. Loris Capi Rossi, 132.3. So Rossi, for the second successive lap, takes six tenths back off this chasing group. Into two and curve. Nicky Hayden in front of Sete shipping out. Here comes Turo Akawa coming under pressure there from Carlos Checker. So Rossi out in front on the road. Loris Caparossi second on the road. And this is the battle for third place on the road, but actually second place in the race. Here is Valentino Rossi. We're just getting news here of Troy Bayliss. Yeah, obviously uh, Bayliss there okay, but uh, on his way to Melbourne to hospital for further checks. And uh, that's a good sign for the uh, Australian fans who are here and sat at home, of course, because Troy Bayliss, it looked very nasty, didn't it? And I think he was knocked out cold when he came off his bike because of the way that he just skittled across the gravel and then didn't move. And it looked pretty hairy there for a while, but thankfully, Bayliss is going to be OK. And that's big news as well, of course, for his family back home in Monaco. Uh, his wife, Kim, recently gave birth to baby Ollie and the other kids, Mitch and Abby, all watching this race in France on TV. Can't be here with their dad in Australia and... Uh, I'm sure their hearts were in their mouths when they saw that accident, but uh, thankfully, Troy Bayliss is OK. Nicky Hayden really carrying the charge now to the podium. I think now is when we're going to see the best of Valentino Rossi. He knows he's got to push it. He's doing so, and he's got a soft tyre on the back of that bike. Uh, Gibbonau and uh, Nicky Hayden, they have a hard rear tyre, but Valentino chose to go with a soft tyre because of the cool conditions, I expect. And now he's really going to have to push it. There's people who've said that he hasn't been, had to push it as much as before, but now he really is going to have to push it if he wants to win this Australian Grand Prix. We are going to see a super demonstration of the man, Valentino Rossi, but it's Nicky Hayden. He's absolutely flying, and Sete Gibbonau. Sete Gibbonau's got past Hayden, actually, at the end of the straight there. So Gibbonau back up to second. Hayden drops back to third. And uh, it really looks as though these four, Gibbonau, Hayden, Ukawa, and Cheka, will fight it out for those remaining two uh, or remaining podium position. And one would imagine that Rossi's going to start to come back through. Now, actually, the gap be, uh, between Rossi and Capi Rossi stands at six seconds, but the gap between Rossi and this chasing group is about nine seconds. So with that 10-second penalty, that would uh, place the ghost of Rossi, if you like, one second behind Carlos Checa and improving all the time. So uh, really, you would imagine that Rossi very, very soon is going to be back in front of this group in the, uh, the, the cosmic race that's going on, <laughs> on on a higher plane. And uh, Nicky Hayden in the real race, He's giving uh, Sete Gibbonau all sorts of problems, but Valentino Rossi, as I say, he's around 10 seconds ahead of this group. He's around, he's level with them really on overall times because of that 10 second penalty. He's Hayden back in front of Gibbonau in the hairpin once again. It's all very confusing, but at the end of the day, it's a case of Rossi. He's got to extend his lead over Capi Rossi by another four seconds over the next eight laps. That's absolutely right, because he is going to catch these men, isn't he? There's no doubt about that. He might have even caught them as they come over the start and finish line now. The, whoa, the gap between Rossi and Capi Rossi, 6.6 .6 seconds, so he's trying all he can. But Rossi is now up into third place because the gap between him and Nicky Hayden is now 11 seconds. Up into third place, uh, straight fight. Up into second uh, place. Second place, sorry. Yeah. 
Straight slot going on behind him there between Hayden Jibana, Ukawa and Checker. But yet, yeah, Rossi would be in second place behind Loris Capirossi as it stands at, at the moment. The gap between Rossi and Capirossi, 6.699 seconds. That gives Capirossi a three-second advantage, just over three-second advantage over Rossi overall with eight laps to go. They are now going to tell Valentino Rossi on his pit board that he's up into second position. They didn't let him know in the last couple of laps where he was, but now they're going to let him know that he's done the hard work, he's back on the podium and he just needs to keep going because he's taking time out of Capirossi all the time. He certainly is. We ride with Turo Akawa. You just see in front of him, Sepe Jibano and Nicky Hayden. There's Hayden, Jibano, Akawa coming under increasing pressure from the Yamaha there of Carlos Checa. But Rossi now back into second place. It's a straight fight between the Ducati and the Honda, but it's not a straight fight because poor old Loris Caparossi, who's second on the roads, is not really racing against Valentino Rossi. He's racing against the clock. Very, very hard for him. It's easier for Rossi, one would imagine, who's just got to keep going as fast as he can. And this is Rossi, you've got to say, at his absolute best. He crosses the line. Seven laps to go. What's the gap now? Rossi with a 131.593 on that lap. Capi Rossi with a 132.440. The gap stands at 7.5 seconds. So uh, Valentino Rossi takes almost the second off Capi Rossi there on that lap. Here comes Jibben out up on the inside of Nicky Hayden once more at the end of the straight. Now watch out for uh, Nicky Hayden through this section and particularly in the two hairpins. The Honda corner and then at the bottom of Lukey Heights. That's where he's really liked to pass Jibben out over these past couple of laps. Let's watch. And they come into the first one round this long left hander. And into this hard breaking right hander. Nicky Hayden not close enough this time. Okawa, in fact, is closer. In Okawa up on the inside of Nicky Hayden. So Hayden caught out cold in the right hand hairpin. They're letting Capirossi know that he is in first place, but as well that his lead is diminishing. That's what's going to be on his pit ball when he goes past now. Great stuff, Cav, because uh, we really are across this race. It's very, very hard to follow, but there we are. There is the race leader, not on the road, but on overall time. But his lead is being whittled down metre by metre, yard by yard, mile by mile by the world champion Valentino Rossi. When they cross the line, we get a better idea, but Rossi is reeling him in. It's very, very hard for Loris Caparossi because he hasn't got anybody to aim at. He's just got to go as fast as he can. Rossi knows he's got to pull back by time. Rossi has crossed the line. 131.587 for Rossi on that lap. Now, what's the gap between him and Capi Rossi? It's 8.8 .8 seconds. Surely Valentino Rossi is going to win this race. He's taken another second off Capi Rossi on that lap. This is sensational stuff. From, Loris Capu, uh, from Valentino Rossi. He's lapping under previous pole records here at the Phillip Island circuit. It's a sensational performance. Chris Burns there, the uh, Newcastle rider, is about to get caught up by this pack. He's uh, been lapped already by Valentino Rossi. He's just going to run that machine wide and let these guys through. But uh, the rate that Valentino Rossi is going, he's going to win this race. He's got five and a half laps left to go. He's taken around a second a lap off Loris Capi Rossi in second place. What a ride from the world champion. Just a word for the people who are filling up the point positions. Kenny Roberts is going to get his best finish of the season if he keeps going. He's in ninth position. Jamie McWilliams has just been passed uh, by Makoto Tamara and Gary McCoy. But they're still all They're all there. 10th, 11th, 12th positions. John Hopkins just behind them. They're all there in the points. And that's good work for all those teams here at Phillip Island. All eyes now focus on the doctor. The 24-year-old Italian, Valentino Rossi. Throw what you can at him. 10 second penalties, weather, seagulls, anything else, it doesn't matter. He just goes on winning MotoGP Grand Prix racing. You are just watching the master in action. He crosses the line with five laps to go. He could be leading the race on corrected time. We'll wait and see. Could be after the way he's been going the last few laps. Rossi with a 131.655 on that lap. So he's getting faster and faster all the time. Capi Rossi, a 132.7. Rossi takes out another second off Capi Rossi's time and the gap now 9.962 seconds. Rossi within just a couple of hundredths of a second off the race lead once more. What a race this is for third place. Toro Akara has got up the inside of Nicky Hayden chasing Sete Gibbonau. Gibbonau third, Akawa four, Hayden five, Carlos Checker in sixth place. This is settled now. We know this is the battle for the final position on the podium. Corrected time doesn't matter anymore. And Valentino Rossi is surely going to win this race. Sete Gibbonau. And this is a great ride by Toro Akawa. Perhaps he won't be in MotoGP next season. 
but he's certainly going out with a bang. There is the Kawasaki of Gary McCoy, who leads the way in 11th place from Jeremy McWilliams. Good points for these two riders. McCoy easily his best ride of the season in front of the home crowd. And Jeremy McWilliams improving every time out on that four-stroke Proton KR machine. Behind them is a John Hopkins. Behind them, Noriyuka Haga, Andrew Pitt and Colin Edwards. So these are smaller factory teams doing a good job against some of the bigger teams in MotoGP racing. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you're talking about Proton. They're doing well against the likes of Suzuki and Kawasaki. That's certainly the case, of course. That machine only brought in at round four of this series. And it's already going quicker than their two-stroke machine at this circuit last year. And it looks as though we've lost Carlos Checa. We have Carlos Checa out of the fight for the podium. And Speedway style spins his uh, Yamaha around there. And that's not too effective uh, wheel spinning across the wet grass there for Checa. Poor old Carlos Checa. What a disappointing time he's had this season. His teammate, Marco Malandri, looked well set for a third place out of the race when he crashed out right. This is the long left-hander that brings us back into the start and finish straight. I'll bet my house on the fact that Valentino Rossi is winning this race. He certainly is. He's winning it by 0.392 seconds. His lead over Laris, over Loris Capirossi, 10.392. The 10-second penalty knocked off. That means Rossi is just in the lead, and he's still going quicker than Capirossi. A 131.973 from Rossi, a 132.403 from Capirossi. But the thing is now that what we sometimes see from Rossi is when he's built up a lead like this over the last couple of laps, we can afford to drop his times off showboat for the crowd he certainly can't afford to do that here he certainly can't just to remind you he's been docked 10 seconds for overtaking under a waved yellow flag i think it was the accident of troy bayless when the yellow flag was out he overtook marco malandri and he's been docked 10 seconds it doesn't matter he's got a 0.392 second advantage now over loris caparossi in second place this is the battle for third place it has raged throughout between sete jib and out Toro Kawa and Nicky Hayden. It was a collective sigh of relief in the Repsol Honda garage when he went through that time and it was confirmed that he was leading the race. He goes past now, now they know he is in the lead. Uh, on the laps previously, every time he was getting closer, everyone was up on the toes, but no, he wasn't there. But this time, they could all breathe easily because Valentino Rossi is leading this race now and looks set for another victory. Yeah, he just extended that lead to 1.290 seconds over Loris Capirossi, 11.290 seconds out there, 1.290 on the revised times. And this is going to be a real gloves off stuff now for the fight for third place between Jibinau, Okawa and Hayden, all on three Hondas. Jibinau on that number 15, Okawa on the number 11, and Nicky Hayden on number 69. All riding for different teams, all riding the all so familiar winning V5 four-stroke 990cc Hondas. Important races, certainly for all of them, as Akawa goes up the inside there of Nicky Hayden, but a very important race for Turo Akawa. Uh, Sete Jimenao settled for next year. Nicky Hayden, I'm sure, is settled for next year. Turo Akawa, his future in MotoGP, is a little bit clouded, and if he can finish on the podium, that's going to do his cause an enormous amount of good. Watch out for Nicky Hayden here as he comes up on the inside of Turo Akawa. He likes this section of the circuit over Lukey Heights as they come up into the left-hander, and then he's very strong on the brakes as they come down the hill. Let's see if he can get close enough to Sato Jim, and I don't think he is this time. Into this right-hand hairpin. The car closes right up on the rear wheel of Hayden, and there you can see the gap now. That, that gap is going to be a bit different. It's uh, 11.290 seconds. We told you that on the last lap, 1.290 overall. What's the gap this time? Rossi has crossed the line. We still wait for Caparossi with two laps to go. He crosses the line now. The gap, 12 seconds on the road. 2.589 seconds over corrected time. Valentino Rossi two laps away from his eighth Grand Prix victory of the season. Toro Okawa and Nicky Hayden side by side into the fast right at the end of the straight. And Okawa now back up to fourth place from Hayden. Hayden around the outside of Okawa though, shuts him off. Great riding from Nicky Hayden. Hayden up to fourth. He doesn't want to let Jimena out of his sight. Hayden has got his first Grand Prix podium in his sight with two laps to go, and he needs to hold off Okawa so that he can battle with Jibinau. Round the fast left before they come up and break for the slowest part of the course here at Phillip Island, the Honda hairpin, second gear right-hander. Jibinau safely through, they're coming up against the back markers. I think it's probably Chris Burns or David De Gea. It looks like one of the WCM machines. They're going to arrive very, very fast indeed in a minute. One and a half laps to go. This is the battle 
for the last place on the podium here at Phillip Island. Sete Gibbonau third. Nicky Hayden looking very threatening in fourth place. And Turakawa just dropping off a little bit in sixth. Watch out for Nicky Hayden now once again as they come over Lukey Heights. I said on the last lap, he liked it coming into this right-hand hairpin. Will he try it on Sete Gibbonau? Is he close enough? Not quite. But if Hayden can stay there for this last lap and he can hold off Toru Okawa and make sure that he doesn't concede ground in fourth place, and I would expect him to make an attack on Gibbonau, if not before, then certainly at that point of the, uh, the track as they come down from Lukey Heights into that right-hand hairpin. Just a word from Marco Melandri. He led this race at a part of it. He's in the hospital. He's uh, hurt his right shoulder. He's going for x-rays on a possible broken right leg, but they don't think it could be that bad. But he's having scans on it. Just a word from Marco. Well, let's hope Marco Malandri is OK as this battle still rages for third place. They are coming up against the back markers. I think it's Sete Chibonau's teammate they've actually had to go past. And he moved out of the way very conveniently. So Sete Chibonau third, Nicky Hayden four, Tura Kawa in fifth place. We just got a glimpse of a very lonely Loris Caparossi in second place. Valentino Rossi is going to win the race. But who is going to finish on that third step of the podium? Three quarters of a lap to go as they break for the hairpin. Nicky Hayden is right where he wants to be. They've shaken off Toru Okawa on this lap, and that's just what Hayden wanted. He's right on Jibanao's tail. And as they come up through Siberia now, this fast left-hander that brings them up towards Lukey Heights, he will be ideally placed as they come down into that right hairpin. It would be the ideal chance for him to take Sete Jibanao and clinch his first MotoGP podium. He looks out of the extra speed as they go up over the top. Nicky Hayden is now up to third. He's done it a bit early now. Sete Jibanao fights back. Has Jibanao got enough as they come round the left? And down into the dip, Nicky Hayden will look to shut him off. Certainly will. Down the dip they come of Lukey Heights. Hayden in third place, Chibonau in fourth place. No way through there for Sete Chibonau. Valentino Rossi has won the Australian Grand Prix here at Phillip Island. Second place is going to go to Loris Caparossi, a lonely second place for the Ducati ride. Who is going to take that final position on the podium? Caparossi crosses the line now in second place. Is it Hayden or Chibonau? It looks like it's going to be Hayden Gibbonau looking for the slipstream as they come down the straight, but Hayden has the speed. Hayden takes his second podium in MotoGP. Gibbonau fourth, Ukawa fifth, and then a long, long gap back to, I think it's going to be Olivier Jacques in sixth place. But uh, Tadio Okada, Mick Dern, the rest of the Honda team down there on pit wall. The two Repsol Hondas both on the podium. Trevor Morris there, crew chief for Nicky Hayden. It's been a good weekend for Trevor Morris. He likes it in Australia. He says it feels like home. It's like being back in England and Manchester, where he's from. Loris Capirossi, excellent ride for him in second place. Yeah, very difficult ride for him because it was all so complicated, wasn't it? All he could do was ride as hard as he could. But, uh, well, how many more times have we got to say it? This man, without a shadow of a doubt, is the greatest motorcycle racer in the world at the moment. Perhaps the greatest motorcycle racer of all time. Valentino Rossi, they took 10 seconds off him for uh, overtaking over and the yellow flag was being waved. I think probably when Troy Bayliss crashed, he overtook Marco Melandri, but he is still there, Valentino Rossi. Throw 10 seconds at him, throw anything at him, and I think now that is a memorial to the late Barry Sheen being shown by the race winner, Valentino Rossi, as his teammate, Nicky Hayden, celebrates third place. What a superb ride that was from Nicky Hayden, and what a last lap. This is the pass for, on uh, Sete Gibbonau. I didn't expect it to come here. I don't think Gibbonau expected it to come here either. He was probably expecting, like we were, the late breaking into the, uh, into the hairpin at the bottom of Lukey Heights. But it's over the top that Nicky Hayden, get, uh, Nicky Hayden gets him round the fast right-hander. And that was a superb ride from the AMA former Superbike champion, MotoGP rookie. And... Uh, well, he's deserved it, hadn't he? He's got stronger and stronger all season. A few doubts from some corners about Nicky Hayden's ability, but he's cast Whoa. those to one side here this weekend. That's no doubt. And a, a poignant celebration from the world champion, from one to another. We lost Barry Sheen back in March to cancer, but his memory lives on here at Phillip Island. So there's you now. Well, I think he's scored more points now than any other man that's finished second in the World Championship. But he's off the podium in fourth place. I can tell you now, he won't be happy. Well done, Loris Caparossi. That was a very, very strange race for you indeed. I think he's just asking about Troy then. I think he said Troy. And uh, the news is Troy Bayliss has been taken to hospital in Melbourne. He's not thought to be seriously injured. And uh, that is very good news because he went down very, very awkwardly indeed. But he's done it again. 
As I say, they've taken 10 seconds off him. They've uh, tried to make life difficult for him. The weather wasn't very good when he woke up this morning. It doesn't matter. As Matthew said, a memorial to a great world champion from a tremendous current world champion. Valentino Rossi remembers the late, great Barry Sheen. Hugs all round for Nicky Hayden and his team as they uh, welcome him back to Park Ferme. A fantastic ride from Nicky Hayden. And if there was any doubts about the validity of his podium in Mategi, he now can shake off those doubts, enjoy the champagne for the first time on the third step of the podium. And also congratulations to you, Gav. Absolutely amazing. You called that yellow flag before anybody else and uh, fantastic. We knew exactly what was going on up here and I hope that came over to all the viewers throughout the world. There's going to be a party on Phillip Island tonight in the Repsol Honda camp, I can tell you that. We know where it is, don't we? <laughs> We're not telling anybody else. Not hard to find in the little uh, island of uh, the little town of Cows on Phillip Island. I tell you, there's going to be some celebrating tonight. Some thick heads on that British Airways flight from Melbourne to London tomorrow for this team and this man, Valentino Rossi, and his teammate, 22-year-old American. Nicky Hayden and I think Valentino Rossi really is quite emotional about it because where will it end? It's just a superb ride wasn't it from the world champion and it was uh, they should do that every week when he takes out yes. a lead like that it makes it a lot more interesting doesn't it? Pushing and pushing and pushing and riding that bike to the absolute limit and the Australian crowd here after the, such an ominous looking morning with the storm clouds and everything else have been treated to an absolutely phenomenal MotoGP race. We've had them in the past here at Phillip Island. This was one of the best and this was Valentino Rossi at his best. And I'm sure now Nicky Hayden there in the background is going to have a word for him as well because when they watch the tape back here tonight, they're going to enjoy every minute of it. Valentino Rossi is actually getting some stick from his friends as he goes over and he's greeted by them. He's giving a, a little bit of stick for uh, having caused that penalty, showing him the yellow card, but uh, in the end he's done the work necessary. But you're down there with race direction, Cap. Could you have a word with them? Say Valencia, we could do with about 20 seconds off in Valencia, I think, just to make the race more exciting. I'll see what they say. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's uh, Rossi and his manager there with the grey hair and uh, sunglasses, Gibo, who's uh, currently allegedly negotiating with uh, pretty much everybody in the paddock about next season's whereabouts of the world champion. Will it be Yamaha? Will it be Ducati? It won't be Ferrari, that's for sure. And no matter what you've been reading in the papers, Rossi is happy in MotoGP. And, uh, well, it remains to be seen whether he'll look for a new challenge at Yamaha or Ducati next season. And uh, if he rides anything like he did today with that disadvantage. I'm just uh, down here with Nicky Hayden at the moment. Nicky, if there were any doubts about the podium in Mategi, there can be no doubts now. Uh, you can go and enjoy that champagne. Yeah, no doubt. Feels pretty good. It was a good race. And, uh, you know, I led a little bit there for a few laps. and was just a little excited. But uh, overall, I'm pretty happy. I mean, bike worked good. And it was early on, there was a little bit wet spots and made it really challenging. But I didn't want to hold back. I just wanted to go for it the whole time. And... Uh, Last lap, I just I had to go, give it a go on set day, and uh, I felt really good there. I knew he had a couple crashes in that one corner, so I thought maybe I could stick him right there where maybe he didn't feel so good and uh, just hold him off to the line. Were you aware of uh, Rossi's penalty at all? No. I, I he penalised 10 seconds for uh, passing Marco underneath the yellow flag, so the, all, all the race was being knocked off 10 seconds, so you weren't aware of that out on track? No, not at all. <laughs> But you rode just the same anyway and got that podium position. You must be delighted. Yeah, I'm happy. I just want to thank my team and everybody who believed in me. You know, when I got the opportunity, a lot of, lot of doubters. And uh, had a tough go early on, but I just kept my confidence and believed in myself. And now every week I'm getting stronger and stronger. And just want to thank Honda and Repsol and all my team and all my sponsors for believing in me. Well, congratulations. A lot of the people in America will be congratulating you. Well done, Nicky. Well, there was definitely a shake in his voice there, Nicky Hayden, wasn't there? And it's an emotional time. It's a tough world, MotoGP, especially when you've been knocked like Nicky Hayden has this season, undeservedly so. And, uh, well, he's produced the goods here in Australia today. One round to go of this MotoGP World Championship. Can Nicky Hayden challenge for victory in it? That's at Valencia in two weeks' time. There's a crash there early in the race, and it uh, looked like David De Gea's bike set on fire, in fact. We didn't see that during the race. 
But this was a moment of concern. Troy Bayliss, as you can see, knocked unconscious when he was flipped from his Ducati and laid face down in the dirt. Luckily, Troy Bayliss was okay. Out on the track, what a ride it was from the two rookies, Marco Melandri and uh, Nicky Hayden. That was the key moment in the race. Valentino Rossi passing Marco Melandri under a yellow, fla a yellow flag. He was given a 10 second penalty and that meant that he had to get out the front and stretch out his lead as best he possibly could. Behind him, Melandri, Hayden, Capirossi, Gibbonau. What a race it was between them. Fantastic entertainment, especially between the two rookies, Hayden and Melandri. Hayden running it wide there. It seemed as though his podium chances may have gone. He fought back extremely well. Melandri, meanwhile, he couldn't quite hang on. He went down on the Yamaha. The news is that he may have a broken leg and certainly an injury to his arm there. Valentino Rossi riding the Honda to the limit at the front to try and extend a gap of 10 seconds over Loris Capirossi. That's what he had to do to win this race. Capirossi, of course, had to stay in touch with the Italian to try and win. Gibbonau and Hayden then battled out for third spot. Toro Kawa became involved in the latter stages of the race as well. And gave Nicky Hayden and Gibbon out of something to think about, but it was Rossi who rode supremely at the front, stretched out that lead to over 10 seconds. Nicky Hayden left it until the last two laps to produce his best effort in MotoGP. It was Checker who ran off, he was out of the podium fight, but Hayden hadn't given up. There he was in fourth place. He got Sete Gibbonau around the outside and up into that right-hander. What a move it was from Hayden. An absolutely majestic win from Rossi. An excellent second place from Capi Rossi, smoking that Ducati around the final entry into the start-finish. And a quite thrilling performance from Nicky Hayden to take third. Valentino Rossi, victorious at Phillip Island, and he dedicates his victory to the late, great Barishi. Well, as you can see, the crowds at Phillip Island are beginning to file up towards the podium where they will enjoy the podium celebrations of Valentino Rossi, Loris Capi Rossi and Nicky Hayden on there for the first time. And that champagne, I'm sure, will feel good to Nicky. Two Italian flags and one American flag sit atop the podium at the Sky Vodka Australian Grand Prix. That Stars and Stripes flag's not been seen for a while, not since Kenny Roberts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree what a sensational race the Sky Vodka Australian MotoGP and a battling fight all the way to the finish. For third place, Nicky Hayden of the USA on a Honda. Nicky Hayden takes to the podium for the first time in his Grand Prix career. The MotoGP rookie stands on the rostrum for the first time. He finished third at Mategi, but he didn't get to celebrate with the champagne there. I'm sure he's going to enjoy it this weekend. Loris Capirossi back on the podium after an indifferent spell on the Ducati. And once again on top of the podium, the world champion, the doctor, Valentino Rossi. Barry Sheen remembered by, by Valentino Rossi on his victory lap and on the podium, that famous number seven. Who could forget? So Nicky Hayden accepts the prize for third place and I'm sure that plate will be taken back to Kentucky over the winter and have pride of place. There's his dad, Earl Hayden, down in uh, Park Ferme with the chief mechanic, Trevor Morris. They've worked hard all season. Loris Capirossi, second.
for him and a good result for Ducati. But it's 21 consecutive podiums for Valentino Rossi. He could equal the record of Giacomo Agostini with 22 at the final round of the 2003 season at Valencia. I'm sure that's not on his mind at the moment. As he celebrates victory at the Sky Vodka Australian Grand Prix. Well, it's long been his favourite colour, yellow, hasn't it? Valentino Rossi it robbed him of victory at Donington Park, but it was going to do nothing to stop him at Phillip Island this week. For the third time today, we listen to the Italian national anthem. The Champagne girls get a good squirt in from Valentino Rossi, Nicky Hayden and Loris Capi Rossi. The Champagne flows at Phillip Island. It will continue to flow long into the night before the big trip back to Europe and the final race of the 2003 season at Valencia in 14 days' time. A hug for Nicky Hayden from the world champion himself. It's not been easy being across the garage to Valentino Rossi this season for Nicky Hayden, but he's come through it well. And if Rossi does decide to move next season, that will give Hayden a big chance of some more champagne on the podium next season. No doubt about that whatsoever. Maybe even a World Championship challenge for Hayden. He's been touted as a, a World Champion in a couple of years' time by uh, Rossi's crew chief, Jeremy Burgess, and by Mick Dern as well. Big talk from big people in this MotoGP paddock about a big talent in Nicky Hayden. But once again... The Australian crowd will be left with the memory of another famous victory and a few souvenirs from the world champion, Valentino Rossi. I think everything but the kitchen sink has been thrown down from the podium at the moment. They're looking for anything that's not bolted to the floor. Except the helmet. <laughs> 